Pamela Erlin, and I have with me my lovely assistant and wonderful manager, Jim, and he's going to introduce himself and let you know how we're going to be doing our trans-channeling, how to submit your questions, and all of those things that you need to know about some of the technical things here. I will give a brief trans-channeled message from the Mother Earth Collective, and then we'll go straight to your questions. Okay? Sorry. Um, what we're going to do is take questions from the Facebook page. Um, all the several hundred questions that have been entered there. And then we're also going to take questions uh, entered in the viewer questions and suggestions field um, directly below us here. Um, I did shut off the ability to see those. Um, the reason for that is because when the up systems used, they bounce around like crazy and they're really hard to keep track of. So please know that your questions are there. Um, and thanks to Jody who is helping me sort through those uh, and is getting those ready to be used. Um, so please enter any questions you have in, in that field and uh, we'll be pulling from there and from the Facebook group. And um, that's really it. We're not going to be doing any camera uh, requests today for this. This is going to be uh, only an hour because it's a very difficult uh, thing for, for Pamela to do. So um, to keep it moving and get as many questions as possible, we're, we're not going to do that today. And that's really about it. Thank you so much, Jim. We're going to go ahead. And I had a quick question from one of you in chat who asked me, um, and this is a very important question. You asked me, who is the Mother Earth Collective? You know, versus channeling Mother Earth, when people say there's Mother Earth as if there's one being. There's not one being. There are many beings. Um, some of, there's one that I know specifically that I'll be channeling today who goes by Gaia. There's another one who goes by Calandra. There are many different names for the different beings in the collective. They are all aspects and fractals of the same being but they are also a collective. These little fractals are collective beings that you know by different names as well. And they all represent Mother Earth. They, all, they are all one and the same. So I'm gonna give a little five minute brief channel message from her. And I'm gonna go straight into trans channeling. And this is different than what you guys know when you see me as a medium channeling beings who I bring in in front of myself and you. And then I hear their questions in my inner hearing and with my clear audience. And sometimes you guys hear it externally as well. You've mentioned that. And then I repeat those answers back to you. Trans-channeling is a completely different thing. This is basically where I get out of the way and the being just speaks. And that's it. So that's what we're going to be doing. Her energy is incredibly, incredibly joyful. I have been laughing all morning. And I'm trying not to laugh right now because she's got a lot of energy of celebration. It's not what I expected. Um, so I will be... Definitely channeling her and then I'll go into some explanations of how her energy is and how the channeling is and what she's like And then we'll begin to go ahead and take questions I will go back into a trance in order to trans channel her for every single question I likely will not be coming out of that trance in between questions So you'll just see me sitting here looking, you know, <laughs> like I'm asleep. <laughs> so that's how trans channeling goes so, Namaste, we're going to begin now Greetings, all of humanity. I am the collective of Mother Earth. I, as a whole, wish to greet you here today. You are all my beautiful, lovely beings. You are my children. You are me. You are here because you chose to be here. This is your choice for those of you who feel wounded, who feel pained, who suffer, you will too see me as wounded and pained and suffering. For those of you who are here, because you feel love and expression of joy, you will see me as if in dance. For those of you who are here in your specific purpose to understand healing, you will see me as a source for that healing. 
for those of you who, who come here to understand all of your different facets of emotions, you will see me as a reflection thereof. I'm here for you. I hold this healing space for you. I as a being am completely healed and whole. However, I am but the reflection of what you see, what you feel, what you choose, what you experience. I am you. I am here for you. I have not sacrificed myself for you. I have chosen to heal you and you have chosen to be within me. We are one. We are whole. The perception of human separation is but a perception. You are whole. You've been whole and complete, unseparated prior to your incarnation and now. Your infinite souls of unconditional beauty, joy, and unconditional love. You are source. Please never forget. Hold on. My chair was moving. <laughs> Takes me a, um, a little bit to come out of trans channeling, especially if there is a collective of beings, and she is a collective of beings. <laughs> And her energy, I just wanted to take some time to express to you after that quick little message that um, she is completely overpowering, like my entire chair. I don't know if you saw, I was trying to prevent my hands from shaking and um, I don't feel overpowered in the extent of wanting to cry except for with joy. <laughs> There's no sadness. She feels completely grounding but at the same time it's a vibrating feeling within my whole body when I channeled her and to give you some background to that um, last night it was an interesting experience for me because I actually slept under the stars and for those of you who know me I don't do that I, I'm a bit of a princess I'll tell you like it is I don't I don't like you know I love gardening and things of that nature but it was not time for me to go to bed I get in my you know 800 thread count sheets and I take a shower and I'm clean. I don't like any of that. <laughs> so I did that last night and she talked to me all night and it was the most amazing, even though I was sleeping and I woke up completely refreshed, um, this set of the collective beings were so amazing. So um, I also felt like she was teaching me how to completely channel her and just get out of my own way. I suggest that all of you channel it. I'm not anything particularly special in regards to being the only one that can do it. There are tons of channels through which she comes and you too can learn to do that. And we're going to be teaching channeling in some of my upcoming workshops, particularly the one this Sunday. Um, so if you're interested in learning about channeling and the upcoming spiritual development workshops, or if you just want to know in general, come join us on our group that we have for learning, our Facebook group. Um, is there for your learning and there so that we can learn together and that you can find me there at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash or reader i'm going jim is here and some of you heard saying um jim is still on the screen i'm well aware of that he's here in case i don't come out of the channel channeling very easily at the end of them <laughs> or if for some reason i need to and he's here also to read the questions to me because i know his voice and i can when i go into trans channeling i can hear his voice and hear the questions but when I do trans channel, I'm completely oblivious to everything else that's happening. Um, she is completely taking over at that point. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go under and he's going to begin to read your questions while I'm in trance. Namaste. Enjoy. All right. So as I was saying, Please, uh, please enter your questions in the uh, in the viewers' questions and suggestions box, and we'll take, get to those. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> First question from. Uh, the website from Rebecca Wild. 
she would like to know what are the sounds in the sky that are being heard around the world is that you is it humans or is it being caused by other life forms Rebecca your name is beautiful and your soul is beautiful thank you for being here with me today and with us today that is the shifting of the different portions of my being and of the planet. This is called tectonic plates, shifting scientific phenomenon. Your scientists, your human scientists regard this as these plates move, these portions of Earth move naturally in the various shifts that are occurring and you are in the middle of a massive shift of your entire planet from one dimension into a higher one. During this, it's quite natural, it's quite understandable that you will hear the noises of this shift from these plates grinding together deep within the earth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David So would like to know, he's got a very complicated question here that I'm going to not attempt to read. He basically is asking about super volcanoes, the one in Yellowstone and the one under Lake Toba and several other things I cannot pronounce. Um, he'd like to know if we're in any imminent danger. You as a collective must decide this on your own for yourselves. You as a collective in humanity must understand that this is completely of your own doing and in your own control. When many events happen in this particular manner, it is based upon the collective in the surrounding earth in which the disaster occurs. You as a collective will decide when this occurs. You're not in imminent danger at this moment from this these areas. Thank you. This is from Tracy Crosby, also from Facebook. What happens when a species becomes extinct on Earth? Does it manifest in another form? or in another dimension, or on another planet, or is that life form gone forever? It's only a perception of distinction, of extinction. Your individual perception of that is that these species are extinct, and they are on your planet within reason, however, they too have their choices and reasons for being here initially and for leaving at that point in time. They're not extinct. They simply go back from whence they came. Thank you. This question from Facebook from Lois Marie Ward. How do the solar flares affect you, and really how do they affect us? There will be vast and specific, but yet individual matters in which they affect you. You individually will be affected by a series of physical side effects, some of which may include headaches, nausea, spiritual awakenings, some of you have set an intent and are therefore in your third dimensional existence and the frequencies of your beings are 
already so vastly aligned with the sun, and thus you will not be affected at all. As a collective, it's occurring, you will awaken. It is to help you lift a veil that has been in existence since the dawn of what humans perceive as time. This veil is lifting, you now see all. And yes, this does include the solar flares increasing. There are also many protections for this. You will not be so thoroughly and physically affected for greater damage ultimately. These are temporary side effects through which you adjust and to which you adjust. This helps you in your awakening. This is a helping, not a hindrance. Thank you. This is a question from me. So, is the are the poles reversing? I noticed that this has probably been asked as well in the Facebook group. Are the the magnetic poles reversing? And is the heliosphere in danger of collapsing? It seems to be shrinking. Yes, and yes. Yes. Please do not allow this information to cause any waves of fear within your soul or within your conscious mindset and being. Please do not operate within fear. Understand that it is necessary for the cycle and regeneration of life as a whole on your planet. You will shift. Everything will shift. Every new beginning comes from some beginning's end. Thank you. A question from Facebook. From Evan McNeil. How is an earth soul formed and created? You are source. Source chooses to project within you. Source creates consciousness in various ways and in nonlinear fashions. The perception is that it is linear. The perception is that of time and is of past, present, and future. There is nothing but the now. There has never been anything but the now. There will never be anything but the now. The past is not relevant. There is no past. Source creates in a projection of fractals. Billions of fractals and even beyond what you would perceive in your numeric facet of comprehension. Source has been projecting and incarnating throughout the various galaxies. There is no time. It will continue. Thank you. So a question from Spreecast. Natasha May. Uh, is there an event coming in September of this year? Yes. Yes. I've, I Robert? validate your concern. The event is and has been an ongoing event. It will not be a giant awakening during which there would be one massive shift. This shift has been occurring throughout what humans recollect and understand as time, and this shift will continue to occur. It is already occurring now. There are no shifts that you need to fear in your imminent your imminent perception this year, there are portions of the shift that have begun and will begin in September as well, throughout December specifically. These are the vital components of the shift will occur between your time frame perception of September and December. Thank you. 
another question from Spreecast from Susan Stroud. Is eating vegan is a vegan eating lifestyle the best choice? Eating a plant based food without humans living off animals or animal products? Please understand, dear humanity, there is no one best choice for your entire collective of beings at this time, otherwise you would not have chosen to incarnate with individual free will choices. Your bodies are immensely different. For the majority of you, yes, this would be an excellent choice, but there are just as many for whom this would be a terrible choice. This choice is individual, this choice is personal. Your bodies are unique and different and made by source. In these various differences, some of you will indeed need these animal products, some of you will not. Please refrain from judgment. The animals that have chosen have not sacrificed themselves for you. I have not sacrificed myself for you. There is nothing negative negative in this perception, just as you understand in your native cultures, and especially in your aboriginal cultures, you understand that the animals, the animals choose and they have a specific contract and pre-birth intention, just as you do. They choose to become you and a part of you in this particular facet, and this is their choice. This will not be for each of you. Those animals that do not choose to become a part of you in this particular way, to be consumed by you, will not make that choice. They choose it or they don't. You choose it or you don't. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, it's a combo question from Facebook and Spreecast for Beck. Um, what is the best way for us to ground? I am ground. I'm here for you. Why not connect in this facet? There need be no particular complication, no particular profundity. You are ground. I am you. You are me. Utilize this facet in all natural components. Touch your feet to the earth. Touch your hands to the earth. I urge you, humanity, to be in your gardens. I urge you to be in my rain. I urge you to be under my sky without fear. I urge you to drink from my waters without fear of contamination and pollutions. I urge you to perceive me as whole and healed and to take every advantage that I am here to offer you. You are already on my ground. You are grounded. Thank you. Um, Precast question. When it comes to Greek mythology, you are a primordial goddess due to you coming directly from the being chaos. You know, I'm sorry, this question keeps jumping around and I'm not able to read it. I'm going to skip to a different question and come back to that one when I can get it up on screen. Um, this is from Cody Singh. Hello, dear Mother Earth. What is your take on malviolent reptilians are doing here on Earth? And I have them around me all the time bugging me. Will they leave once Earth has fully ascended?
they too have chosen to incarnate in a specific manner, it is not different in many regards from your particular choice to incarnate here as well. However, they operate within dimensions, within yours and theirs. Theirs is fairly close to yours. Therefore, they operate in both. However, much as can be said for what you perceive as evil and goodness within humanity can be said for this particular race. Much as can be said for the confusion of humanity that leads for fear and destruction and chaos, the same can be said for the reptilian races. The same can be said for any particular race that carnates within a third dimensional facet. Therefore, they are not incredibly different. We have a Facebook question. I'm not going to butcher her name. What is something you would love to see humans do daily for the planet? I would love for you, dear ones, to do more for you. I would love for you to do more for your earth, do more for your water within the earth. And I would love for you to do more for your breath and for your sky and do more for you individually, connecting with all of the various gifts of nature that I provide for you in whatever form you choose in your incarnation. Remember, I'm here for you in that facet. It's your individual choice. Thank you. Another Facebook question. Do you mind that we take crystals? And another question from me is, this was, that was from uh, Lewis Marie Ward. And a question from me in conjunction with that or an add-on to it. Should unused question or crystals be returned? Um, as little grandmother suggests, and should they be returned to water? There is no should. There is no one manner that is right. There is no one manner that is wrong. My elements of earth are my gifts to you. You utilize them in the best ways to facilitate your healing, your grounding, to help you understand everything about yourselves. They are my gifts. You can return them if you should choose. You certainly do not have to. Thank you. What happened to the lost continents? Mu, Lemuria, Atlantis. This has been asked by numerous people. Yes, they are not lost. There has been no lo lost. When Earth was created, these continents were too portion of my earth. They are now a, a portion of your space. They are now a portion of your ether and what you know as the element of ether. They are not lost. They completely thrive in your ether and in your skies. Thank you. It's a Facebook question from Beth Kinsey. Is there anything we can do about the Fukushima radiation in our fish, in our air, in our rain? Could you begin to perceive Earth as whole and healed? If you can, if this is thereby a possibility, this is my suggestion. Ultimately, it's your choice to perceive 
that you can now heal or that you cannot. Should you choose the former, the healing arises from an individual and collective perspective. Their healing arises thereby and therefrom. It's your choice in perception from this moment on. Thank you. What causes a vortex and what are the most sacred or highest vibration places in the U.S. and in the world? There are many perceived higher vibrational vortexes and portals through which many beings come and go throughout the dimensions. Vortexes are caused due to the various combinations of the elements of air, earth, and ether. The combination of these three elements produces what you know is a vortex, similar to a portal, through which you can be connected to all of the elements that are necessary for your evolution and for your specific awakenings and transitions from your third dimensional existence. They are throughout various spots. You call them hot spots. They are spread throughout the equator, specifically. You have what humans know as ley lines. They are there in every particular component of these ley lines. They are there for the purposes of lifting what you know as the veil. The veil has been in existence throughout all of your perceived time. It is now lifting, and the purpose of the vortex is in coalition and in combination with your lifting of this veil. Thank you. Is the earth hollow? Yes, somewhat. Your perception is that it is made from your metals, particularly iron. Is that what's at the core? Yes. There are many facets of dimensional existences within the core and what you know of the core, this is an entirely different dimensional existence. When perceiving the core of Earth in your dimensional perception, it is iron and it is not hollow. When perceived from the dimensional perception of the fourth and the fifth and even the second dimensions, it is something completely different and it is ether and there are beings within, there are planets within, there are structures within, there is much within when viewing the core of Earth from this perception. Thank you. Uh, Facebook, Anna asks, can you tell us about the Bermuda Triangle? Is it a portal to other dimensions? Yes. As described as your portals and vortexes, it is utilized in that manner, and many beings stumble across it quite unintentionally. However, there's a soul intent that may or may not be consciously known when going through such portals in this particular area of the sea. You could end up Perceiving this consciously, if you do not have the conscious intent to go through such a portal, you could have this intent at a deeper soul level and soul existence. And this is how people stumble across that portal within what you know as the Bermuda Triangle.
Verity Green asks, how can we honor you as a ceremonial leader of women's circles? How can I best honor you and assist with the healing of earth and your elements? Please understand me not as a separate being, but as a portion of you. Please understand that as you heal each other and as you heal yourselves and you perceive the healing thereof, you also heal me. With that being said, plant, grow, flourish and thrive from, your, from the soil, from the oceans, from the creeks, from the lakes, from all of my bodies of water and all of my bodies of land. Utilize them, replenish them, replenish my trees, replenish my grass, replenish your gardens with the growth of my plants. Thank you. Tucci asks, why are you so beautiful? And she's totally flirting. The perception shall be different for each of you. Some perceive my beauty, some perceive that in my grace thereof. Some perceive this as incredibly healing for them. Some perceive beauty in my suffering. Some perceive beauty in your own suffering. Beauty is your perception. If you perceive beauty and this is healing for you, then by all means, utilize this healing perception. Thank you. We'll cooperate. Pinder asks, is Mother Earth a six-dimensional being? Why did she choose to descend if she was once in higher dimensions? What can we do to help in our and her ascension? Please understand, dear soul, I'm here for your growth and awakening and healing. I am here to cause the balance to occur between your different dimensional perceptions. There is no lack of understanding except when you choose polarities or dualities. Please understand that your perception is the key to everything that you ask. Thank you. Sylvia would like to know about your true creation. She believes water, like everything else, is created from light. The ocean was here first, and then with time, the land grew from the oceans. Can you please confirm um, how your real creation came about? It came about in the same facet, in the same manner in which Source creates for all of you. It came about as a blink. It came about as a thought, it came about as a thought form which became consciousness and then became all of these tiny fractals of that thought and that intent. And then it expanded, these fractals expanded further and further and further until you had your planet and all of the different lands and waters. There's the obviously obvious perception of creation 
through the photosynthesis of the sun, there were still beings in creation before this occurred. Thank you. Kim would like to know um, everything that has the highest vibration by category. Uh, what plant has the highest vibration? What animal? And what country? This is all uniquely structured based upon your unique perceptions individually and as a human consciousness. As a whole, currently speaking, there are many high vibrational plants. You perceive them as higher or lower based upon duality that simply doesn't exist in other dimensionals, in other dimensional ways. Your perception is limited in this manner. They are all high vibrational beings. You are all high vibrational beings. You shift in and out of lower and higher vibrational existences in the same way that plants and animals shift. They shift with the wind. They shift with the rain. They shift with the sun. Their vibrations are currently and perpetually changing. There is no one higher vibrational component in any particular species of plant or animal that would not shift the moment you took notice thereof. Thank you. What does your guardian angel look like? I am my own guardian. Without fear, chaos becomes a completely different structure from which balance is birthed. Thank you. When will the veil be completely lifted and what happens when that occurs? Time is hard to understand in this facet. In your human understanding, the veil has already begun its process of lifting and will continue. The further you shift, the more the veil lifts, the more the veil lifts, the more the balance of your shift occurs. The veil lifts in vibrational balance with your shift. It follows your shift. It is in sequence with your shift and with your awakening. It is occurring and has been occurring through hundreds of years of what you perceive as time. The majority of the veil is lifting as we speak and will continue to lift through what you understand as your time frames of September and December of this particular year. But it will continue your choices and awakenings cause it to stagnate or occur more quickly. Thank you. What is the role of dolphins and whales? They are interdimensional beings. They are multidimensional beings. They are from various planets that you have labeled planet Sirius. They are from many dimensional existences. They are here to lift the vibration of humanity. This is their individual choice to incarnate as beings on this planet, during which they can lift your frequencies. They can lift the frequencies of your bodies and of your minds, of your thoughts, of your emotions. They can do this individually in connections with you. They can do this as a collective. 
They do this simply by being at home in your waters. They live through their sonar frequencies, their particular auditory gifts that cause these sonar frequencies, keep Earth in alignment with healing, growth, and ascension. This is their individual and collective choice. Thank you. What are your favorite sounds of life? Your children, when they first breathe the air around them, your children's first breaths of life, first cries of life, all of the children, of all of the animals, and their first breaths of life and first cries for their mothers. As you as a collective cry for your mothers, you do not do so out of sadness. You do not do so out of being unevolved. You do so strictly out of unconditional love. And this is my greatest beauty. Thank you. What role do mermaids play on Earth? They too choose to incarnate within these specific beings based upon their abilities of sonar frequencies to lift the molecules of your seas. They lift the molecules within your great seas and the great waters therein. They heal my seas. Thank you. Do woodland nymphs and fairies actually have faces like people perceive in their third eye when they see them? Or is that just how we translate their energy when they are around as beings with faces? This, this particular perception is individual. They have faces that shine with light their faces shine with joy. Their faces are vastly different based upon the many races within their species, much as your faces are vastly different, but you have the same structure within your face. So, yes, with this in mind, they the majority of their appearances will appear to you in the perception of having a face and a mouth and eyes, which they do have, just as you as a human race has. And there are unique qualities therein for each of you. Their faces and their bodies are of light. It is incredibly difficult within the human perception, particularly in the physical eyes, to see and perceive all of the distinct qualities of their faces. Thank you. Do you have chakras like humans? If yes, uh, where are they located geographically? This is but a human perception. Humans require chakras at this moment in their evolution. Some point they will not. I am a light being. I am one. I am one energy component. There are no various perceptions of separate chakras within me.
Thank you. Tatiana asks, is the human body going to mutate while ascending to the fourth and fifth dimensions? This is not of high choice. This is not of the light that this perception would occur. However, there are various ways that each individual within your human conscious collective will choose to shift. This, as a human conscious collective, is a high, highly unlikely choice and highly unlikely end result. There's an overwhelming amount of questions and people asking for prayers, processes, anything that they can do to help the earth in any way they can. Is there anything you can recommend? If you should perceive the need for processes within your perception, this shall then become necessary. If you should not perceive the need for processes for yourself or for my own healing, this should too not become necessary. However, my soil is necessary. My water is necessary. My air is necessary. This is because I am here as you and for you as a species. Therefore, focus on the soils, plant, and allow the nourishing of the soils to nourish your bodies, to heal what you perceive as lack of wholeness and lack of health. If your incarnation has chosen ill physical health, or even ill mental health, my earth should nourish you. If my soils are cleansed in these individual ways by you as humans, you too shall be nourished and cleansed and whole, which is my purpose. Thank you. Can you describe the sensation you feel when we interact and play with nature, garden, walk on the grass, etc.? I feel joy. I feel connection or having been within my purpose and having completed my purpose every time any of my children play within my soils and my waters and within my being it further facilitates healing for myself and for my children, and it brings me immense joy. What about when we disrespect nature? I do not hold the same frequency of human vibrational emotions, of punishment, sadness, violence, Anger is not within my knowledge and perception of emotional expression. There is truly no understanding within me for pain. pain. 
Thank you. What connection to the First Nations, Native Americans, indigenous peoples have with Mother Earth that is different than others? And will they as a whole begin to help remind humans of their connection? As with many groups within your human conscious collective, they must choose to follow this choice and follow this path or not. They have chosen the path to awaken humanity to the vital understanding and importance of healing of earth and of your human bodies. They have chosen this path since the beginnings of your perceived time and will continue to choose this path. They have been in existence for as long as my planet has been in existence. They have been nourishing the soils. How they are currently different as a collective from the majority of your races within your species is simply that they choose simplicity, they choose honor, they choose respect, they choose in their individual and collective lifestyles, balance, they choose that everything is a cycle of life which occurs between earth and their bodies and the animals between all of the elements of the earth and the sky and the air and the ether. They balance everything succinctly and respectfully. This is the difference. And they are teaching you. You simply must choose to hear. Those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have choice for knowledge, let them know. Thank you. Is there anything that can be done to balance out the damage being caused by fracking? Once more, with your perception of damage, I do not feel damage. I do not feel suffering. I do not feel pain. You as a collective come to this planet and I am a part of your being. For this particular purpose, as humanity ascends, this purpose will no longer be necessary. This purpose is not necessary except within the perception of certain individuals and it will no longer be a perception once the frequency of these group of individuals rise. Thank you. Can you recommend a source of healing for people who have had poisoning from bad foods, pesticides? I guess it would be like a, a detox. It is of my earth. The answer is within my earth. There are various choices within my clay, within my soil. There are various definitions that you use for your soil medicines, two of which you know by as diatomaceous earth and clay medicinal clays, this shall quickly solve physical maladies. Okay, well we've been going for an hour now. Do you wish to continue?
the being through which I channel should withstand this perhaps another five to ten minutes. Thank you. Does sacred sex heal the planet? It is a joy of your creation that causes the healing within your bodies and awakens you to healing within these types of connections. When you heal the facets of you that you perceived as broken and sick, yes, you heal the planet. And yes, I follow your lead in this. Sacred sexuality, if truly felt as a sacred expression, does indeed heal yourselves and thereby the planet. Thank you. Excuse me. Curious to know if an individual flower like a daisy has its own soul, or does a single daisy share one soul with all daisies everywhere? Plants have unique ways of incarnating their plant bodies are somewhat similar to your human bodies. They somewhat connect in both individual ways, in the ways in which you connect with your soul families. Some are individual without the perception of family and stand alone. It's a unique choice of the soul who chooses to become a plant. Thank you. Why do so many people have huge resistance, fear, and disgust to insects? Yes, this is perception from, again, what your humanity perceives as time, what your humanity perceives as past lives, Although it is not past, many have particular experiences with other beings that are quite similar to the beings on Earth that you know as insects. These experiences were perceived as negative, which then caused fear, which then caused further fears of similar beings on Earth. These beings are non-sentient in nature. Earth insects are non-sentient in nature. If you have a specific fear of non-sentient beings, this is the concern. Thank you. Is organite beneficial for humans and is burying organite by cell towers in various locations throughout the planet beneficial for you and for all of us? As to your first question, it is beneficial for the rising of the frequencies of your individual and collective human bodies. This, in turn, raises my frequency within my soils, my water, my air, the elements that surround me. This balance is why your organite is incredibly helpful. Nothing more in relation to your towers, however.
Thank you. Can you give any perspective on the upcoming hurricane season this year? Uh, as it pertains to Louisiana, Florida, and the east coast of the U.S.? This predictions of this nature are not incredibly useful, particularly because your vibrational frequencies individually and thereby collectively shift eminently and presently and constantly. However, at this point in time, Many portions of Florida should be without fear, but within a small alert of being in alignment to such a reality with hurricanes within your season, within this year. This could change. Um. We have several questions here. What's up with bees? Is it being caused by a pesticide? Is there actually a shortage? Um, I'll just let you give us your perspective. The beings who choose to incarnate within this specific species of insect, your bees, have chosen duality in the same facet that you have chosen duality. However, they too will choose their extinction at their particular point of reference of choice. This is imminent. Their extinction is imminent. Their extinction is caused by many various things, such as, not limited, to sound frequencies, sound pollutions, air pollutions, disturbances of hives, disturbances within the soil. Should human collective consciousness choose to rise and live in a simple way in which these noise frequencies and these air and soil pollutions are no longer necessary. The bees too shall ascend and survive. If not, the bees will ascend and choose not to survive. Thank you. Are there or have there been other races of beings that live inside of mountains, volcanoes, or underground? Throughout all of your perceived time, and even now, yes. Great. Thank you. Is it uh, time to wrap it up? This being should stand some rest now. I bless you. I love you. I thank you all. You are my children. Please remember your particular and individual reasons for choosing to incarnate here. Please understand that I do not suffer. I make this choice for you because I love you. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> She's amazing to channel, by the way. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really do. Uh, we will probably upload this and put this on YouTube for you soon. And we'll probably be doing more trans channel sessions. I'm great. Thank you for asking. Someone is asking in chat. I feel really, really calm, except there's that bladder issue again. <laughs>
Yeah. Whenever I channel her, I, I like everything's flowing. Sorry to be so non-discreet. <laughs> but I'm doing great. And for those of you who are going to be watching this in the archives, you can find us at um, www.orreader.com. Um, you can also find me on my Facebook group if you want to continue discussions about this or if you want to learn about your spiritual awakenings in general. This is why we're here as a spiritual family to do things like this. Um, someone asked me last week, why is channeling even necessary? Why do we need to do that? This should probably explain why. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and end now. Namaste. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Jim, for being here and for being my voice to sort of keep me within body because I kind of wanted to float away during that a little bit. So thank you for being here to ask all my questions and for your help during this recast. Thank you all.